sinister secrets, and dark truths, mystical creatures, and magical powers, dark dungeons, and enlightened paths, all lead us to ask that one question as time marches onward. So I believe the last spot we ended on was Eberus waking up from being devoured. So Eberus, we're actually going to start a little bit back um, with you incapacitated. Um, this intellect devourer has just zapped your mind and your consciousness starts to unfurl. You can't really feel anything, but it's almost as if your mind is like passing through some sort of ethereal energy. You can't see in this state of being. There's no, you know, there's no sense of up or down, but the sensation you do feel is almost that you're being stretched and squeezed. You're spun around, you're thrown from side to side. You're getting really disoriented in this weird space that you can't really see or, or, or get any handle on. And then there's a voice that you hear. And this voice just says, Eberus, Eberus, my child, my friend, don't worry. Your father is here now. Your father will help you. Shh. Yes, that's it. Let go. Embrace the void. Embrace the void. And this voice just keeps repeating, embrace the void as you are in this weird space. And suddenly you're pulled back. If, if, that, if, if you could in this, in this space feel anything, you would feel like you were suddenly grabbed from behind and pulled backwards. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're getting stretched and squeezed again. You pass again through this ethereal energy and you sit up and you snap awake. And sitting next to you are a small cat-like being, a small uh, miniature owl bear, and a kobold. You've never seen these creatures before, but you aren't currently being digested by a giant beast, so maybe that's a good day. <laughs> uh, is it still like chaos around the outside of the arena, or is it? No, when we ended, it had been a couple hours, and cleanup efforts have started. There's people kind of running back and forth, but you're mostly getting this little group that you're next to. Uh, you, you guys are all kind of just getting ignored for the moment. And uh, I remember everything up until I got brain zapped or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you you basically, you you were at the concert having a good time. You fought this brain thing. You got zapped. It goes blank. You had that vision thing that just happened. And now you're awake. Okay. Did you guys grab my hammer when you dragged me out? Probably not. I could probably barely have lifted it, you, if not true. technically at all. I'm uh, a 30 pound kobold with a zero strength modifier, so. Oh, wow. I didn't, didn't know you were <laughs> that little. <laughs> thank you. Thank you truly for pulling me up. Um, you were like the, uh, you're like the mother who pushes the car off of the child. It was mm -hmm. all adrenaline. <laughs> It was all Misty Step, honestly. <laughs> so, uh, Eberus is still going to expect a fight and be looking for the enemy. He's going to bolt up, reach for his weapon, not find it, and then grab his uh, holy symbol around his, his neck and be like, Lord Almighty, what was that? What happened? Yeah, a lot of bad shit happened. Um... <laughs> I could tell that. But what kind of bad shit? That was awful. You had an intellect devour devour your brain for a second there we got some people to help you out though ah uh, that that uh, explains a lot um i wasn't able to carry your hammer because i was barely able to carry you so that's where that went 
You pulled me out of there. Yeah. You, like, in the face of... Do I know what an intellect devourer is? Uh, you like, failed those... the check, so no. Oh, okay. But, I mean, um, context clues. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, it's like, in the face of that, you stopped to rescue me. Yeah. Truly, truly you are a noble being. I I must repay this debt. You, you must allow me to follow you and serve you. And uh, he's going to uh, bend his knee, uh, like kneel. I don't know if that's going to like put his head lower than yours, but he's going to do like the, knight, <laughs> the knight, knightly chivalrous kneel. Pro- probably about equal with. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and he's going to solemnly say, I truly owe a huge debt to you. Uh, would you give me the honor of knowing your name? Um... Well, I, I am honored. Um, the, in my tribe, I am called Vora Strix, but uh, among your people, I know I go by Vora. Vora, I am Ebrus Stonoth, and from this day forward, I will be your protector. Oh shit! Oh shit! Yeah. Uh, um, I wasn't expecting that. Um, I was just helping a fellow fighter. Um cool <laughs> such things do not are not taken lightly among my people uh, as you guys are having this little bonding moment uh Ebris is gonna feel a tiny little elbow nudging his shoulder <laughs> and uh how tall is uh Wait, i'm just gonna say i'm guys? like two and a half feet tall i'm a little i'm a feelis i'm a little cat guy <laughs> oh my god i'm, I'm two I had... foot eleven i wrote it down i'm just short of three feet <laughs> and is it taller than three feet? Um. No, you're like three feet at the tallest. Let me check. Actually. Oh my god, I had no that. idea. <laughs> we are all small See, this people. Is, this is why I I changed from half dragon to kobold because I'm like we all have to be small. You were just copying us. Yeah, because if you were big, we'd just ride around on your shoulders the whole time. Right? Oh yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. We got to get across this rushing river. Well, let's all hop on the big guy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all right. Um, also, I'm going to say Eberus recognizes Vora slightly from the uh, the initial fight when Vora started fighting back, and then Eberus went to rally. So of yeah. course that's that's why he's focusing more on Vora, and he's going to uh, turn to the nudge and say, uh, "You too. Don't don't think I'll forget you." Your names, please. Uh, Chester Meowington. <laughs> oh, um, um, my name's It. S- Sir Meowington, It. I've only got one life to, to give, but truly, believe me, I will repay you as well. Yeah, just, uh, don't, don't say Meowington too loud around here. So you guys are all uh, getting your allegiance sworn to by uh, this dwarf man. The Colosseum has basically, like, the doors have been broken in. There's no way to secure this scene. And it kind of looks like people are moving in and out of the place, looking for bodies, searching for any walking brains that might have gotten away. It's, it's pretty chaotic right now. A lot of a lot of moving around and stuff. Yeah. Is there, like, a uh, obvious leader who's kind of directing the effort? or? Uh... Um, yeah, you hear some shouting from a... Uh, a, a large wagon a few hundred feet off from the steps that you guys are all around. Cool. I would like to head in that direction then. <laughs> okay. Hey guys, we should see about helping these, helping out with the effort. I'm super curious about where all this shit came from. Right, Mal. Uh, helping. And I'm going to look towards it and wink. Oh, 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 yes, yes, helping. And then it's going to just double wink back with a little eyebrow waggle. (laughs) Right. Helping. (laughs) Physically confused. By the way, I don't know if I properly described last time how Vora looks. Fora is in like full decked out um, like shaman gear. So he's got like uh, kind of a leather garter that holds. He's basically wearing like a big kilt. And then he's got this skull on his head that also has like antlers coming out of it. And then like uh, fur 
coming out the rest of it as uh, just this big ceremonial headdress. And then he's pure white with like red streaks throughout his throughout his scales. Okay. And he just looks completely out of place here. So yeah, this little shaman dude just goes straight off uh, towards the the yelling. Okay. Uh, does anyone go with him? We all follow. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I guess. Uh, yeah, you, uh, you you come around to uh, to this wagon and you you hear the voice that's shouting, and sort of uh, a- as you approach uh, it and Chester, you both kind of recognize the voice a little bit. You can't really put a name to it at first, but as you uh, come around the corner, there is a, a a water genasi standing there giving orders, decked out in a full spider uniform, and uh, it and Chester, you would recognize this as as a uh, Sergeant Rain. Uh, someone that you've probably had run-ins with, you know, probably apprehended you a few times for petty crime or something like that. Back in your early days when you guys probably weren't very good criminals. Uh, Chester's going to go ahead and pull his hood down over his eyes a little bit, trying to obscure his face. Sure. I'm going to try hiding behind Chester. (laughs) (laughs) And yeah, Vora and uh, Eberus, you you guys see this this water genasi uh, giving out orders to some people. She's got a bench set up uh, with like a, a map rolled out on it. And she's like, you know, kind of looking it over, making notes on it and stuff. Yes. Excuse me. Yes. Yes. What do you, uh, what do you want? I'm, 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 I'm quite busy here at the moment. Well, I am a professional, what you people call adventurer, I suppose. And uh, I was there in the second row when all of this went down, and uh, we are looking to assist in wait, everything wait. we can do. Wait, wait, wait! You, you were in the second row. Yes. Uh huh. And okay, I, I, I need to know what what exactly happened down there because I've heard a lot of stories. You know, there's there's stories of a monster that popped up. I haven't been in there myself, but. You know, oh, yeah. all, th- all this chaos is bad for business, and it's bad for celebration, you know. So, uh, uh, tell me what happened. Well, first, the music was actually really great. Um, this guy in the back, total bro dude, let me uh, levitate so I could actually see everything. Total bro move. Pro- total bro <laughs> move. <laughs> and then, right as Cortana f- finished? finished? She finished, the first right? song. Yeah, she yeah. finished the first song. As soon as Cortana finished their first, her first hit, uh, the entire ground did well, and this giant mass of tentacles came out. Um, and the brains. And, my, and the and the middle brains and my, and my knowledge, um, I know that it is an Otiag, some massive evil creature from beneath the grounds. Um, typically they hide out in the mountains, so I don't know what they're doing here. And that has sparked my curiosity. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of sparked all of our curiosity around here. Uh, okay, you uh, you said you wanted to help? Yes. And uh, are these little creatures here uh, yeah, going, they're my friends. going to help you? I. Uh, yeah, I am also here to help. And we're here to help, too! Um, I rolled a 14 for her to try to figure out if maybe she recognized you, but uh, nope, she missed my DC. So Nice. Good. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she's like, well, uh, I guess if you really want to help, um, could you get in there and maybe check for any survivors or, you know, maybe see if that hole goes anywhere? Uh you know, um, we're we're still we're still looking for uh, Cortana. We're still looking for you know, obviously any concert goers that we that we, we were actually able to see Cortana escape and fly away. So she should be safe. Oh, that's that's good. I, I thought those wings were just for show. I thought they were uh, thought they were up on wires or something like that. But that's that's good to know. Maybe she'll perform again some other time. Hopefully, this show was great. Well, yeah. Uh, if you if you guys could get in there and look for any survivors, that would be really helpful. You know, don't don't put yourselves in any in any danger. But uh, you know that 
that hole there isn't isn't a good good thing. If if there's monsters down there, we we, we need to seal that up. Yeah, let's do it. Oh yeah. And with like a little little heave ho kind of arm fist in the air, uh, Vora kind of rushes inside. Uh, she s- grabs your shoulder real quick and stops you, and just says, uh, "One one more minute. Uh, when you're done, uh, depending on when you get back out, if we're not here, uh, here's the address to our uh, to our headquarters. You just you just come by there with any of your findings or or bring any of the survivors by there, okay?" And she hands you a little piece of paper that gives you the location of, of where uh, where the HQ could be found in this in this district. Well, everybody ready? Yep. Uh, what was her name again? Rain. Sergeant Rain. Which I guess you you two would have seen the little patch on her on her uh, left breast pocket that that says Sergeant Rain. Uh, since she's a water genasi, is her name Pira? Is she a light cleric, potentially related to a uh, air cleric that, or air genasi that we know? Not a cleric. This is this is not a lira self insert. I promise. Dang it! This was actually a random roll for uh, determining what what race and all that stuff. So. Oh, nice. And then I just looked up elemental names. That works. Uh, yeah, we all head inside. The Coliseum is, is just ruined, obviously. Um, there's, as you walk into the main foyer, where you... Uh, Everest is going to keep an eye out for his hammer as well. So as you come into the main foyer where, where Vora, you bravely dragged Eberus out um, and then Misty stepped. Uh, there's uh, squashed brains and like goo kind of just smattered all over the floor. There's bodies strewn about. Some people are sitting up dazed. Others are being rushed out on like makeshift stretchers by like some of these other rescue workers that are in there. We see a few uh, priests and priestesses moving uh, amongst the crowd um, or amongst these groups of bodies and stuff, doing what they can to provide healing. Um, and yeah, sitting kind of just next to the uh, the door where you fell, uh, Eberus, there's your, your nice shiny hammer um, that you had upgraded that day nice are they gonna uh be mad at me for tampering with evidence if i retrieve it i don't <laughs> think you have anything to worry about well righty. speaking of tampering with evidence <laughs> i'd like to look for some bodies to loot oh my god <laughs> do you even have room to, lo- to for more loot guy knows what he wants oh okay, you're already rich <laughs> i've got a uh people-sized backpack on my little kitty boy okay He's got really big pockets, man. I got big pockets. You know what they say about guys with big pockets? Lots of loot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can you, you can totally try and and loot some some bodies here. Uh, kind of just in this main foyer, you you spot uh, two bodies that are easily accessible that no one's really paying any attention to. All right, I'd I'd also like to do this sneakily if that uh, changes anything here for you. Um, I'll help out and make oh. you, and keep a lookout. Yeah, both of you, I guess, roll some stealth checks to see if you can inconspicuously hide yourselves from your your new friends here. That's a fifteen. You said sorry. What was it again? Stealth. Cool. Um, okay, so uh, John, you rolled a fifteen. Yes. Zoe's roll was an eleven. So, John, I need a high or low. Oh, uh, give me a, a high. Okay. D- did I say high? Because I meant low. <laughs> <laughs> so, Vora, you see uh, Eberus pick up his hammer quite lovingly. Um, and out of the corner of your eye, you see these two little little creatures moving towards another body that's kind of lying down on the ground. And this body is clearly dead. Yeah, so that's what you're seeing. Come, we gotta go in deeper into the auditorium. And uh, like Chester trying, to, hurry trying you to, along. yeah, Chester obviously trying to throw his voice and make it sound like he's maybe a couple rows forward. Uh, now, oh, you, uh, you guys aren't in the, you guys aren't in the the, the seating area. You guys yeah, are still, still in, like, in the, the main, outside, the main lobby. Oh, okay, area. okay, yeah. Well, so Chester's just trying to throw his voice, make it sound like he's not where he is. Uh, now, yeah, uh, be right there. He's staring right at you. 
I am visibly confused, but move on. Ebris is equally confused. Uh, are you guys going to continue with uh, picking this guy's pockets? Yeah, no, I'm gonna, it's, I'm gonna... no, it's just going to grab Chester, and we're just going to fall after them. Hey, what are you doing? We got to go. He saw us. I don't want to get caught. Uh, <laughs> damn it. <laughs> Little do you know that there was a diamond as big as your head in his pocket. No, I'm kidding. Damn it. Um, <laughs> really fucking heavy. <laughs> are you moving into the main arena area? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so you come inside, and it looks like uh, the body of the Odiug is just collapsed onto, like, the main section of uh, center seating, kind of down about halfway from the stage. It looks like it just fell over on its side and just oozed out a bunch of gooey blood. Nice. Yeah. Delicious. Um, its tentacles are, are limp and just kind of flailed across the, the aisle. Um, it's definitely dead. There's a, a few officials moving around, picking up more bodies and moving people out. Uh, the stage is just devastated. There's just a huge crater that just sort of looks like it just drops down um, from where the, the creature bust out, uh, burst out. There's, there's no obvious survivors that need any help right now. Um, they're all, they all seem to be getting looked over. I'd like to make my way to the edge of the hole. Same. So the hole is just in the middle of the stage. It's kind of just a tangle of wood and metal and, and earth. It's just, just it, it looks like it descends down at like a steep incline. Um, definitely would take a little work to keep your balance, but um, not impossible to maneuver down. Um, oh, it's not like we weigh much. Well, yeah, there's that too. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll grab a few boards and you guys could surf down. <laughs> Groovy. Uh, there's a foul stench coming up from the the hole. That's a little gross. Uh, Chester, you actually recognize it as kind of the smell that that you had after falling into that manhole cover earlier today. Hmm. It goes directly into the sewer now. The sewer. How could this thing get into the sewer system? Now, what do I look like, an architect? But if those things are traveling through the sewer. Why is the uh, the city not infested with them? The brains, that is. Maybe they don't like it up here on the light. We should go down there and find out. I Come on, it'd be like a cool adventure. Hey, you're right. There's only one way to find out. We might as well be the ones to do it. Mm, as long as you guys go down first and I'll follow behind you. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll take up the rear. All right, Everest is going to make his way down. Yeah, slowly and car- cautiously make our way down, yeah. Sure. Um, Everest first, and then Vora, followed by Chester and It. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So it, it, uh, it, it takes you a few minutes to, to descend down. So it descends down into this stone-paved room. And basically, it just opens up from, like, a wall. Like, as if, like, it had been burst through. It's about the size of an Odiug. As you come into this room, there's obviously the giant hole that you just came out of. Otherwise, this room is really well made and really well maintained. Uh, The masonry on the wall is really well done. Um, It almost looks like it's, like, a permanently built structure that was deliberately put here. Uh, In this room, there's a large cage that has been ripped open from the inside. And on the ground, you see a bunch of broken glass with a few of those brain creatures uh, with, like, sharp pieces of glass sticking out of them. Almost like they were, like, inside some kind of container that got broken. And then unleashed. Yeah. Mm. But the only other things in this room are a couple tables and chairs uh, with some empty cups on them. Uh, Looks like someone was occupying this room. Up until recently. And then there's a, uh, a well-paved path, uh, pathway leading further into this weird structure. Uh, I'd like to begin investigating the room for hints about who might have been here and what, what might have been going on here besides the obvious. Uh, sure. Go ahead and roll some investigation. You roll some investigation. I would like to offer assistance by doing the same. Uh, sure. So roll with advantage. Uh, 22. Yeah. 
Um, so, uh, Vora and Chester, you both uh, start kind of looking around this room. Um, it definitely looks like this room was used to contain these monsters for some reason. Um, there's no, like, paper trail or anything. Um, but, uh, Chester, upon looking at the, uh, the cups that are on the table, you actually do find a couple of uh, worm-like creatures crawling across the, uh, the, the table here. Just small little worms crawling back and forth like actual worms yeah like earthworms okay of course my my mind immediately went to uh baby illithids oh yeah no 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 not not (laughs) fantasy not baby (laughs) fantasy worms um at their the worms are on the table yeah how many chairs are at the table? Two chairs. How many worms? Um, it looks like just kind of a small pile of probably like five or six. Hmm. Almost like someone like had some in their hand and just kind of dropped them. Um, Interesting. Do I know of like any religious or arcane reason these worms would be here? You could uh, you could roll some. Uh, I'll let you choose. You can roll either arcana or religion. Do these worms look good? <laughs> uh, to an owl bear, probably. How's a nineteen? Uh, yeah, let me pull up the uh, the information here. All three of us are just gonna take turns, like slurping some of these worms <laughs> up. Uh, Chester uh, has no interest. Y'all nasty. <laughs> uh, I'm an owl. Owl bear, technically. Actually, owls uh, typically eat rodents. You know what, John? It actually depends on the owl, because guess who just looked it up if owls eat insects? Uh, not you, because you wouldn't do that. Huh, <laughs> me, bitch. And they do. It just depends on the type <laughs> of owl they are. Oh, well, I'm a little lizard dude, so uh, I definitely would eat them. So with a 19, was that religion or arcana? Uh, arcana. Okay. So, um, with a 19, what I can tell you is that uh, these worms definitely appear to be uh, magically generated. Um, and there are only a few creatures in the, in the world that really uh, create worms as like a magical attack or, or anything like that. You do know that there are some cults, some, uh, some ancient e- evils that, uh, that definitely have uh, worm... Uh, symbology linked to uh, whatever their cult happens to uh, to worship. Okay. Do I know? Do I know any of these creatures uh, by chance? Or yeah, so you know of the serpent, uh, de- uh, the serpent deity that's worshipped, uh, known as Dendar. Um, you've heard of one called. Uh, you've also heard of one called Father Lil- Lilmic. You're gonna have to have you spell that for me. L L L Y M I C. Okay. Um, those are the two that kind of spring to mind right away. Uh, I, w- I wouldn't eat those worms if I was you guys. Well, well, but I'm really hungry. Well, you say as uh, Flora has like one just kind of dangling over his mouth. Why? Well, man, these worms are uh, magically generated. And uh, only things I know are, are cults linked to, like, Dendar and stuff. Huh? Uh, Dendar, big, big angry uh, snake. Oh, okay. Well, do you have any food on you, Chester? <laughs> and uh, Chester is going to give you a, a little bag of kibble. Oh, thank you. I eat one anyways. Vora <laughs> eats one anyways uh, Okay, make a constitution saving throw I got this Oh Ah, <laughs> oh, fuck I rolled a six Alright, let's make this interesting You take 11 poison damage Oh Ow. Damn. Shit. And wow. you are considered poison Those worms slap Dang <laughs> That's one hell of a worm. Yeah. Don't eat those motherfucking worms. Yeah, I am worms. vomiting profusely. <laughs> uh, 
Wow, that took me down like quarter. It's just watching, just watching him puke or their or them because I don't know actually if it's a dude or not. Them puke and still just munching on kibble. Just like, hmm. Huh. Uh, for the record, Vora is a them. Cool. Groovy. Um, yeah, so you are considered poisoned. Uh, uh, I forget for what that condition means. Bit. Uh, no, you'll have one. disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. Got it. For one hour. I think. Uh, yeah. Well, he vomited it up, so I'll say we'll cut it down to 30 minutes. So Cause nice. Because I'm, I'm nice. So yeah, uh, other than that, there's... Unfortunately, I uh, I can't do anything about your poisoning at the moment. Uh, there's not much else in this room. Uh, you said there was one other exit, which is the hallway? Yes. Uh, let's start headed down that way. Foro, start headed down. <laughs> you just throw up and you're like, all right, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I need to get some vengeance because this upset stomach and probably future really bad diarrhea is going to be uh, needs to have some vengeance for. Um, we don't have any healing potions or anything, right? Uh, not unless you guys bought any with your starting gear. Yeah, I don't have any. Uh, so Ebers is just gonna just whisper a quiet healing word. Just top you up. Ooh. Can't, can't go into a dungeon with a people at half mass for nine points. Feel a lot better. I'm less green. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you did eat it, knowing full well what would probably happen. Yeah, you never know. It could have been a nice, healthy worm. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen a poison worm before. <laughs> you go down this hallway a little bit, and there are two directions you can go. You can keep going straight, or you can go off to the left left it says left okay let's go uh Ebris will take the lead okay uh you go off to the left you come into this room uh it, it's it's very similar to the previous room you were in uh a, a table with some chairs no worms on the table this time uh and there are a few cages inside this room uh, there are three cre- three cages with these blue almost frog like creatures uh, is the best way I can describe it. It it, it kind of almost looks like a humanoid frog. Okay. Um, it's gonna lean over to Chester and whisper. Damn, these things look ugly, and I thought that Vlora guy was ugly. <laughs> now that's funny. Ouch. 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 <laughs> it's not like you heard. So that yeah, hits you. Me make right. it like a stealth check and a perception check. <laughs> <laughs> Path of perception. God damn it. So those are the creatures that are inside the uh Ooh, I'm gonna the cages see. here. The oh fuck? son of a <laughs> Wait. The fuck? I thought they were gonna like literally just look like little frog humanoid things, like toads. But that that shit looks ugly. That is ugly. <laughs> it's fine. So how big are these? Uh, they're considered large, so. The, oh man, they're like they're pretty nine massive. or ten feet tall. Yeah. So they could they could eat most of us in one bite. <laughs> I mean, I might need like one and a half. Yeah. Um. And as you enter, they actually start like pounding on their cage and like getting really agitated. Um. That's not good. The cages with the little uh, pale spindly, uh, spindly things. Uh, those cages they have two each. In, in the two cages there, and they're just bickering back and forth, biting each other and kind of attacking each other. Kind of like how dogs fight. Yeah. How many of each are there? Uh, so there's four of the pale spindly things, and there's three of the blue frog things. Well, that's horrifying. Okay. Can Ebers check out these cages and see if they're likely to give way anytime soon? <laughs> Um, yeah, so you're a you're a former clan crafter, right? You probably yes. have I a bit of skill in the craft. Yeah, I'm trying to think of what check that would be. I think that would just be an intelligence check. It'd be more like an investigation, I would say. Because you're actively looking at 
Yeah, 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 I'll give you that. Uh, yeah, so roll some investigation. Alrighty. 421. Nice. I mean, these cages, um, compared to the ones you just, or the one you just saw in the other room, this cage, uh, these cages seem pretty, pretty sturdy and stable, not likely to give way anytime soon. Excellent. Uh, Everest will say, ah, we can relax. Whoever made these cages a much better workmanship than in the last room. But who made Uh, these cages? And why are those creatures here? That's what we're here to find out. And Everest is going to look around for any notes or or anything giving any information on these creatures. Yeah, I, I actually want to investigate the locks on the cages and see if there's any sort of like trademark or stamp or something that we rec- we could recognize or maybe look for. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll use your same investigation check, Eberus. Uh As you kind of look up from the, the cages, uh, you look next to the table that's just a few feet off and you do see a small note folded up on the table. Um, Chester, go ahead and roll an investigation check as well. Um, or if you want to use your thieves tools, uh, you can add that proficiency as well. Hmm. It's an 18. Yeah. Um, so there's no clear marks at first on the on the front. Uh, you flip around um, the lock. It, it's basically like one of those, you know, basic uh, padlocks, master locks. Um, you flip around the back of it, and you actually see um, the Artisans Guild, uh, like, seal of approval on the back of this lock uh, which is pretty common for most locks made in Trico but that's what you see okay so that means they're made by the Artisans Guild correct? yes Okay. wow interesting Uh, these locks are are made by the Artisans Guild would they be able to identify these locks? Are, are these special in any way? in your experience? Um, did the locks seem special to me? No, pretty standard locks. Eh, just just some basic locks. Uh, but maybe the Artisans Guild is in on this. Maybe it's a big conspiracy now. Ooh, a conspiracy. Something definitely doesn't add up here. And he's going to grab the note that he saw. Uh, yeah, you open the note, and uh, it basically just says, uh, the bosses ain't happy. You, you left the lock... Uh, unlocked again the other night and one of them almost got out you need to be more careful pay more attention or this whole city's gonna find out hmm. uh Ibris is gonna pass the note around oh I wonder if that's where the creature came from then it was locked up in here but then it got like, it escaped yeah but who would be keeping monsters under a city now that's possible. And who could keep it secret? From down the hallway, you hear laughter. <laughs> um, um, rush after it. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna run around yeah, the corner much. and see if I can't see what's going on. Uh, so you rush back down the hallway that you came in from. Yeah, wherever the laughing came from. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, so this hall this this hallway la- laughter uh, echoes around the hallway uh you come back to that t-junction and you hear it going off uh towards uh the direction you hadn't explored which would be off to your left at this point and looking further in uh you see that some of the hallway is kind of shrouded in a weird mist i don't like weird mist that wasn't there before when you were looking mm-hmm. well, uh, was there any other way to go from the, the room with the monsters in it not that you saw. So we gotta pass the weird mist. Ebris will turn to Vora and say, you're, you're likely the most experienced with such things. Do you know anything about what's going on here? And gesture uh, to the mist. My best guess is it's magic. Magic has to, uh, to bring mist and obscure our way forward. Uh, I guess I'll make a arcana check to make sure it's not like deadly. Deadly. Yeah, that's my biggest worry. Um. Yeah. Sure. Go ahead. Thirteen. Uh. Yeah. With a thirteen, you recognize this as uh, seemingly the effects of the spell fog cloud. Yeah. Somebody cast the spell. Uh. We should just push forward. It's fine. It's like, that's all I needed to know. And Everest is gonna ready his shield and hammer and start to move towards it. 
I'm gonna sneakily do it. I'll follow behind them. As you say, we gotta push forward, uh, Vora. You hear that laughter again uh, and a voice that says, uh, <laughs> yes, yes, push forward, push forward. <laughs> I don't want it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe this isn't such a good idea. Can I try and cast a firebolt in the direction of the voice? Oh, God. <laughs> Sure. Here we go again. Sherman just blowing everything up. Shoot first, <laughs> ask questions <laughs> later. Oh my god. That fucking oh 20. Oh my god, we're gonna die. Oh, shit. Fucking 20. We're just gonna... like headshot this guy through the <laughs> mist. <laughs> okay, uh, roll your damage. You definitely see the firebolt make contact with a figure inside the mist. And it kind of staggers back for a moment. And then it laughs. <laughs> Oh, oh, that tickled. <laughs> please, please, come, come. And I'll show you a tickle. And I, uh, Everest is going to have his shield up and hammer ready and is going to uh, rush into the fog. Well, we know it's at least a straight shot. Is it uh, in, like standing in the middle of the fog or behind the fog? Yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it was standing kind of in the middle of... The, the, the fog cloud sort of like goes down this hallway and then opens up into a room uh, in, into a small chamber uh, ahead of you um, and it's just this creature is just standing in this room Uh, are we rolling initiative, or am I still just able I mean, to do you're, whatever? I mean, you're running into the room. Uh, you're not rolling initiative yet. Okay. Well, I'm going to run in, and I'm going to cast a Gust of Wind. Nice. To dispel the fog? Yep. Sure. Uh, let's see. Line of strong wind, 60 feet long, 10 feet wide. So, yeah, I'm going to shoot it, like, right through the center where we saw the figure. Okay. Uh, so it doesn't actually do anything until it starts its turn, though. So so as you run in, you disperse this wind. You see inside of this room, not just the one figure that was hit by Vora's firebolt. You see four of them. They are tall mages dressed in these blue robes with hoods and a tall staff in their hand uh, in each of them. And... The laughter is actually coming from one on the left, um, and uh, he is like uncontrollably laughing. What creepy bitches! Another one that's on the right side of the room just gives a little chuckle, as well. Did anyone else follow this brave dwarf into the room? Oh yeah. No. <laughs> no, I did not. <laughs> yeah. Chester and it shit. are just like, uh, yeah, on second thought, we're going to go look look at those uh, dead bodies. I, I was going to follow. Chester's curious. He's adventurous. He's a cat. And so uh, other than them creepily laughing here and there, they just look like normal, normal dudes in robes. That's what they look like. Yeah. Great. <laughs> and the one that got hit by that firebolt uh, kind of looks down at their chest where there's a burn mark and says, uh, that... That was actually pretty good. Oh, it's been so long since I've actually felt anything before. <laughs> then try this oh. on for size, and I can cast another spell, yes? Yeah. Uh, Go for I mean, it. They're not, wait. <laughs> Why was I so hesitant? <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Maybe maybe uh maybe we're not. But also they're not like actively trying to fight us or anything, right? Not yet. It looked like he was going to monologue. <laughs> let him monologue. Yeah, I'm going to let I'm going to let him monologue. <laughs> let him monologue. <laughs> While we're doing this, Chester is going to cast invisibility on himself. Okay. Um do you do it before you walk into the room? Yes, I do. Okay. So you're invisible. So this creature that got hit, he says, you know, it's been so long since I felt anything. And uh, he's like, so an entire city full of a bunch of secret police and, and warriors and all they sent were four, four little folk. 
Oh, this is going to be much more fun than I thought. Oh, but but you probably have so many questions. Oh, but t- this is going to be a glorious week. Our 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 father is coming, you see, and we have to get everything ready. Uh, that that little incident up at the concert that was a bit of a a misfire, but oh, but we'll uh, we'll make sure to get things underway very soon. Oh, and uh, who is this father that you speak of? Oh, well, our 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 great and glorious father. We've we've been waiting three hundred years to release him, and 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 now we we are just about just about ready to 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 complete the ritual, and and soon he'll be with us, and and this world will serve as his vessel. Yeah, I don't like that. Can he shoot him? <laughs> That's and um. And who are you? Oh, my my name was forgotten long ago. I am simply a servant of, of father. But if you must call me a name, you may you may call me the seer. That usually does the trick for most people. I'm I'm so excited to, to have the, the, the brave warriors of Trico down here to to help save the city. Oh, this is Oh, this is going to be so much fun. Don't you agree, brothers? And there's a lot of laughter from the other figures as well. Well, he's monologuing. Chester's going to silently position himself behind him. Okay. Not doing anything yet, though? Not yet. I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that, uh, that you all are, are here. Um, weren't, there, weren't there four of you in this little band of, of miscreants here? No, I don't know what you're talking about. I think you were really busy talking. Oh, well. yeah, I must have ran off. What a little bitch. Yeah, he gets that. A squirrely yeah, one, that one. He just likes to run away sometimes. What a douche. But why is it so special that we are here? Oh, well, uh, we are always looking for for more uh, members, more people to join our ranks as we, as we welcome Father back into the Prime Material Plane. Won't you, uh, won't you consider, uh, passing a small test and and joining our cause and right as he says that I'm gonna roll to attack okay and as I attack you're gonna hear Chester say they call you the seer meow but you didn't see this one coming oh my god it's gonna be a 23 to hit uh yep that hits It'll be a 21 damage as you guys see a silvery rapier emerge from his stomach. Jesus. <laughs> and Vora, your little shot earlier did 28. Good job. Okay. <clears throat> uh, yeah, um, he screams, and um, he doesn't like that. Um, go ahead and roll initiative, everybody. Eight. Seven. Uh, six. Six. 23. Also, Josh, I'm so sorry. I just realized that since I am poisoned, I should have done that nat 20 with disadvantage. Uh, well, I didn't. That's my fault as well, so. But I'm remembering it for this encounter, so. Uh, how long have we been chasing after this guy? Um, I mean, all of that happened probably within 20 minutes or so. Ooh. Well, no, I'll, I'll give you it, because... We'll, we'll say your your poison is gone because Yay. investigating the locks and all that stuff, all that stuff you guys did in that room, that probably would have taken a, a good amount of time. Okay. There's no reason to totally kneecap you. <laughs> Josh, you're so nice. I mean, we're about to fight four super wizards, so. Good job, though, Chris, getting rid of the mist. Oh, yeah. I was like, the entire time, I'm like searching through my spells. Uh, like for most of this game, like, ah, oh, there's got to be something I can do here. And I'm finally like, oh, yes, utility. I got it. Got it. So as you uh, stab this star spawn, um, Chester, uh, you, you you get the hit in, and then all of a sudden he uh, sort of um, teleports away from you, and he's suddenly uh, about 20 feet back from you. Um and he's looking down at this chest wound, and he starts to giggle profusely. Um, 
which I'm not going to do again because that's probably annoying. Um, Josh, it's really ruining my immersion that you're not annoyingly giggling at us. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he says, oh, little kitty. <laughs> that was a good little hit. Oh, I guess me and my brothers are not going to have the support of such fine warriors in our in our grand mission. And as he says that, you notice that the three other figures uh, in the room begin to change uh, from their robed figureness. Uh, one of them turns into a large, hulking red creature. Oh, God. Nope. That looks kind of like that. Nope. Oh, okay, that's not what I thought it was. <clears throat> and then uh, one of them... Uh, two of them turn into these s- six-armed, uh, s- like almost spider-like uh, creatures in the way that they move, but um, their their skin looks kind of pale and uh, creepy. Um, here is what one of them looks like. When did this become a Lovecraftian horror story? Oh, I guess those things are definitely not humanoid. Ooh, the red one. Is the red one humanoid? They are not considered humanoid. Damn. All of these creatures are considered aberrations. The two creatures with multiple arms, they are sort of like, their their heads are kind of twisting back and forth with like contained laughter, like <laughs> and the big, the big red guy is just uh, smiling and there's just saliva pouring out of his mouth and um, let's, let's get ready to fight big red guy lo- reminds me of Nemesis just for the audience being like oh yeah it looks like Nemesis oh yeah also kind of looks like Carnage yeah a little bit yeah if Carnage possessed Nemesis that's that's the the love child that is a disturbing image yeah <laughs> the mage that got stabbed he went first because he got a nat 20 and uh, yeah so Chester mm-hmm. I think you're gonna get hurt mm-mm mm-mm no? Mm-mm. Uh, are we going to say my gust of wind is still around, or is it... Uh... How long does it last? Uh, oh, up to a minute, so yeah, it's gone. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, 22 to hit, Chester? Hang on, I'm, I'm making sure that I can... Uh... Okay, yeah, 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 that hits. 16 psychic damage as you are hit by an orb coming out of this mage's uh, staff. Um, would you say that I could use my uncanny dodge... Can you remind me what that is again? I don't have it in front of me. So what I have right here is starting at fifth level, when an attacker you can see hits you with an attack, you can use your reaction to have that attack's damage against you. Yeah, I mean, it's an attack, so definitely. Cool. So that's eight damage, which is a lot better. Um, and then, uh, Eberus, uh, you are also going to get attacked. Nope. 15 to hit. Ooh. Okay, you see another orb coming towards you, and you are just able to uh, kind of dance your way out of the out of the way. God, I'm just damn. gonna slap it out of the way with my I'm shield. Not liking it. Get out of here. I'm not liking these rolls. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a scared. Uh, Zoe. Yeah. You're up next. Um, is the wizard guy still there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's there. So you got the wizard, and then three of them transformed into other creatures. Cool. I'm going to go after the wizard still. Also, I have sharpshooter, so don't see if I pass yet or not, so I can figure out if I want to uh, use sure. it. Is that okay? Yeah, of course. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> Definitely not. Um, What'd you roll, Zoe? Oh, yeah, I rolled an 11. Yeah, an 11 does not hit this guy. (laughs) (laughs) You know what? I thought it might have. Um, That'd be nice, wouldn't it? (laughs) 17? Uh, High or low? (gasps) Uh, High. Nice. Yeah, Uh, yeah, you hit. Mm. Mm. Woo! And now I know. That's perfect. So nine, three, and six. Okay, 18. That is a very good hit. Damn. 
Thank doing work. You. That's the ranger. Danger ranger. I'd also like to, as a bonus action, cast Hunter's Mark. Okay. Uh, who are you putting it on? Um, You know what? I will put it on... Which one's the closest to dear old Chester? Are they all kind of close? Because I know he's in the middle. The closest to Chester is the uh, is the uh, the wizard. Oh, okay. Then I'll put it on the wizard. Why not? Okay. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, I'll remember that for next time. There we go. Um, cool. Uh, can I say something really quick before everybody moves or everybody continues moving? I know it's out of turn. What's up? Uh, yeah, I mean... Uh, no, my character is going to shout out, keep away from them. I have something special planned for them. Going to yeah. cast fireball. So I don't want anybody like... That's... Well, I'm um, trying to spare yeah. our and melee less damage. people. Yeah. It's just going to yell back, don't worry, I'm behind you. Yeah, I'm not getting any closer. And I think Chester is going to do just fine with that dex roll. <laughs> yeah, like said, Chester's not worried. Although you guys should notice, Chester's tail is quite fluffy and puffy right now. <laughs> is he hissing? He's going... <laughs> no, but it's, it's, he's kind of scrunched his nose. Chester's getting serious. Okay, so um, there's this first creature... Uh, so the first creature that has the six arms, uh, we'll call him Mangler 2. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he gives a little giggle, and uh, he pounces on you, It. Um, just comes running right up on you, and he makes six claw attacks. What? What the what? fuck? Damn. Okay, so I have a 19, a 26, a 10, a 10, a 22... And a 21 to hit. <laughs> Question. This is all at once, right? Like all one? Yeah, he is basically on. Yeah, he's basically on you just clawing. Damn it. I have multi-attack offense, but that's actually. No, that, that's. No, what? no, no. That that works here. It he's does? doing a multi-attack, yes. Okay, yeah. cool. Yay! Okay. So. So the 26, the 22, and the 21 hit. Okay. How does your multi-attack defense work? It, I get plus four bonus to my AC. You gain a plus four bonus to your AC? Uh-huh. Oh, nice. This is going to hurt, though. Uh, it's only... Um... 13. Actually, that's not terrible. Okay. So 13 slashing damage. Um, okay. As this creature claws into you, and then he is going to take the hide action for 13, and we'll use the highest, uh, it, you have the highest passive perception, so I'm going to say his hide action does not work. Cool. Next in the order is this big guy, and, uh, he is going to... Run up on you, uh, Vora. No, oh, no. And yeah, he's going to. Well, I was going to use fireball. Fireball, set it on self. Let's go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're a lizard. You're resistant to fire, right? An, an unnatural twenty and a nineteen to hit. Uh, both hit. Uh, so you take twenty bludgeoning damage and seven psychic damage as this guy just slams both of his huge arms into you. Um, and there is a, a psychic pulse that, that comes out of out of when the, the attack connects. Cool. Um, and I need you to make a constitution saving throw. Alrighty then. 17. High or low? Fuck me. Uh, we'll go high. Fuck. That's a two. Um, you are considered stunned until the end of your next turn. Okay, so stunned is just not doing anything. Yeah. Woo. 
Dang, all of these peeps are on us. So I am profusely bleeding out of my ears and wherever he hit me. Oh. Um, next in the order is Chester. Hey, it's me. All right. What does the situation look like? So you've got the wizard uh, kind of off towards, he's kind of near at like an exit tunnel that leads out of this room. He is pretty much about 20 feet from you. You've got the Hulk who is right up on, right up on uh, Vora, who uh, was on the other side of the, uh, the wizard when you stabbed him. So he's probably about 10 feet off from you. You've got the Mangler um, who is nearby it, who is kind of towards the back of the room. And you've got another Mangler who's kind of off on the side of the wall uh, or the side of the side of the room near the left wall. Okay. Okay. Uh, how far is the wizard from me? Uh, 20 feet. Okay. Alrighty. Well, I am going to uh, run up behind the creature that's attacking my homie it. Okay. And I'm going to hopefully attack for advantage. Uh, yeah, I'd say you're flanking him, so... So that's a 22 to hit? That hits. Uh, that's going to be 24 damage. Ooh, that's a good hit. As uh, Chester sees his friend in danger and runs up and spears this creature with his rapier. Yeah, uh, he doesn't like that. I, I would imagine so. And then I'd like to use my bonus action to hide. Uh, sure. There's not much in this room to hide in, but there are a lot of shadows. I, I, I was going to say, I'm going to use the, the shadows and the, the bodies of my enemies and friends to obscure myself. Uh, 14 to hide. Um, okay. And that's my turn. Groovy. Next up is this other mangler. We'll call him mangler number one. Um, I don't know why I numbered them incorrectly, but Eberus... This mangler is going to kind of like push himself off the wall and just start and, and, and come for you with two of its claws. Excellent. Bring it on. <laughs> Yay. Ooh. And that one. Okay. Well, let's see how bad he fucked up. So, yeah. So he rolled a nat one and then he rolled a 21 on the two attacks. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay. So this guy launches himself at you, Eberus, um, and you sort of just uh, lift your hammer up and just sort of, like, fling him off of you, and um, he hits the Hulk creature, and the Hulk creature is now annoyed with him, and... Yeah, um, and rips two of his arms off. Oh, <laughs> Oh. That means he only gets four multi-attacks instead of six. And it, the creature takes uh, 16 points of arm removal damage. And we'll say he doesn't get to... We'll say that that second attack doesn't hit because you, uh, <laughs> you lucked out. It's busy. <laughs> um, well, it didn't happen, but uh, I've got the Wrath of the Storm, so if he was going to multi-attack me, like, let's say, six times, would I be able to take my reaction after the first attack or after the last? Um, that's a good question. Because Can you um, read the wording I've also got of it? Uh, when a creature within five feet that you can see hits you with an attack, you can use your reaction to cause the creature to make a dex saving throw. So I think you only get one reaction per turn. So I'd, I'd say that you could do it yeah. after any any one of the multi-attacks. But only once. Yeah. Cool. Um, so after that little failure of, of Mangler number one, um, Chris, you are up. Uh, what does the room look like? Not not the enemies but the room itself um so it's another one of these plain paved stone uh rooms um there are a couple uh uh cages hanging from the the top like um i believe they're called gibbets yeah um so there there's these two like gibbets hanging from the the top of the room um 
other than that, this room's pretty bare bones. There's a couple tables and chairs, uh, like you've seen in other rooms. No cage, no, uh, no cages with monsters in them. Uh, strangely enough, but um, other than that, it's just a plain stone room. Okay, how tall is it, and how well, like wide? Um, let me see. Let me pull up the map I got here. So it's thirty feet wide and sixty feet uh, long. Um, I didn't actually put in a height for this room, but I would say probably the ceilings are probably about 20 feet high. Did you say that's large enough to cast Call Lightning? It is uh, 10 feet tall and a 60 foot radius cylinder. Don't you have to be outside to use Call Lightning? No. You just have to have the room to, to cast the spell. Yeah, you need the space, and if you cast it out outside in a storm, it gets uh, another dice. Can I? Uh, how is the the wizard looking? Can we tell if he's? Uh, of course, actually, that's a stupid question. He's giggling because <laughs> it tickles. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to be compelled to protect my new friend, and uh, I mean, not not really like life debt kind of partner, but pretty close. And I'm going to cast, let's see, Shatter on the big red guy or near him in a way to hit him and his armless buddy, but not Vora. Uh, yeah, sure. We can do that. Yeah, it's a 10-foot radius sphere. And then you make dexterity saving throws? Yeah. Oh, no, it's uh, Con. Oh, Con? Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay, so that's for the Hulk. That's a 16. That meets. Okay. And that's for the armless buddy. That's an unnatural 20. And that beats. And I'm going to call uh, high on the D100. So go ahead and roll that. Okay. 78. So they both pass. So go ahead and roll damage. I believe it's half damage, right? Damn it. Oh, well, I'm still going to go all out. Uh, that is a fourth level spell slot, and I'm using my channel divinity to max damage. Hell to yeah. blast them for 20, both of them. Okay. Then, oh, and also I will push them away 10 feet because I'm a Tempest, or, yeah, Tempest Cleric. And will that trigger Vora's opportunity attacks? I'm stunned. Ah, well, uh, push them away from him and I will move to interpose myself between Vora and the big guy. Okay. Vora, you are up next. Um, you're stunned, so the only thing you can really do is speak falteringly. We'll just get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> All dazed and, like, not feeling too great. The wizard laughs, uh, since he's up next. Uh, the wizard laughs, and he says, Oh, oh my, my clever little kobold. Oh, you should have... You should never have come down here. <laughs> but... If you're willing to play, maybe we can uh, come to an agreement and you and your friends can just walk out of here. I mean, after all, the father will be here soon and, well, <laughs> it'll be all over then. I feel this is more of a group decision than for me to say. Um, well, uh, Ebris is going to uh, follow your lead. But uh, he doesn't have any particular malice against them, other than the fact that they're, you know, bad guys doing bad things. Mm -hmm. I don't want to speak for everyone else, but I'm very much outmatched here. Because um, I can't take any more hits. Have you ever seen a cat back down from a fight? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are they really going to let us go, too? Yeah. That's fair. Yeah, I don't really trust that they would yeah. hold up their end. You can ask them. <laughs> would you guys really let us go? Oh, uh, well, uh, in, a, in a sense, yes, of course. Can I roll insight on that? <laughs> uh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Perfect. 
for a 19. Yeah, there's definitely some uh, trickery at foot here. Um, <laughs> he's uh, he's definitely not telling you the full uh, the full bargain. I don't trust him. Then what do we do? We fight to survive. <laughs> I have a plan. <laughs> uh, we I think all we need to do is snipe the wizard. I could have blasted him for a pretty good amount, but I moved to protect Vora instead. But which I appreciate. If we like focus him down. And also yeah. like if there's a way someone has healing, right? I'm guessing that's you, Chris. I do, but I I can't spend two spell slots in a turn, so I couldn't heal. Right. Well you'd have and, and damage. We're able to help and get over there, then maybe you'll be okay. Maybe. Then since the party seems to be in agreement, Vora's just gonna give the wizard the finger. <laughs> 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 yes! Yes! <laughs> yes, Vor, I know you're bleeding and you're dying, but yes. Um, the the wizard's face gets angry and he says, uh, Very well, then you will be the first to suffer at the hands of our father. And he holds up his staff, readying another orb uh, attack from it. Uh, when suddenly his head jerks to the side as if he's listening to something. No, no, you will die. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he lowers his staff and he says, uh, Brothers, our master calls us back. Preparations are almost complete. We can leave these little sad creatures to their fate. Um, and uh, the, uh, the wizard appears to just evaporate into the air. Um, and uh, the Hulk creature picks up the guy that he ripped his arms off of, um, and they move to... Uh, Opportunity attack. To leave. Yeah, totally. Uh, Chester and It and I think uh, Eberus, you all get opportunity attacks. 18. And that would have been on the Mangler? I, I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so that hits. 11 damage. Okay. Why not? Why That's not? It's free damage. That's true. Is the wizard still in sight, maybe? No, the wizard evaporated. Damn like, it. That's turned fine. into mist yeah, he's and gone. he's gone. 22 to hit. I'm going to need a wisdom saving throw from the big red guy. So Zoe, before you roll damage, do you subtract for... I do, yes, but for sharpshooter, yes, but I'd meet. You don't know that. You're attacking the mangler dude, which is not the wizard's AC. That's true. I thought it was the same, though, but that could have been a different beast, too. Okay, so what do you subtract from your hit? 17. I subtract 5, so it would be 17. Uh, that hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Yay! Boom! Headshot. 22 damage. 22 total? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get off a few more hits as he limps into the into the hallway and then seems to evaporate into the mist. Um... I'm going to need the wisdom saving throw from the red guy. Yeah, he got an 11. Ah, my bad. Sorry. I missed that. No, I, that I is a say. failure. And the sound of a dolorous bell fills the air around it as it takes 21 oh, damage. Oh, shit. Damn. Uh, what kind of damage? Uh, necrotic. Uh, okay. That's not the kind that he is allergic to or resistant to. As long as it doesn't heal him, it's all good for me. Uh, he takes that hit and then looks back and snarls at you with just like this this monstrous little blah <laughs> and then uh, disappears into the mist. And you hear that wizard's voice again and he says, we will meet again soon. And when we do, you all will pay. <laughs> and you guys are left in this room, um, bloodied up, beaten down, but not dead yet. Thank you for listening to our show. For more content, including world maps, cast info, or additional podcasts, check out our website, oneuppodcasts.com. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Are We Dead Yet Pod and on Facebook at facebook.com slash Are We Dead Yet Podcast. Intro and outro music composed by Salty Dog Company. Find them on SoundCloud by searching for Salty Dog Co. Spell dog. D-A-W-G 
background music and ambience provided by tabletopaudio.com under an attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives, 4.0 international license from Creative Commons. Tabletopaudio.com really brings your games to life and is perfect for both adding in that background music to a podcast or for live sounds during gameplay to increase immersion. Check them out at tabletopaudio.com. Cover art by Ashley Steinke. We'll be back in two weeks with another episode of the show. Bye.